So welcome, my name's James. I'm a solutions architect for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Today, we're gonna to talk about Primera, a storage platform that's shipping from HPE. And in particular, we're gonna talk about the capability to scale the front end, i.e. the controllers, uh, and the capability to do that with disks and data in place. Okay, so we've got our model numbers over here, and we can see the arrow. So as we go through the models, we increase the number of IOPS that we have from a capability point of view, and also the number of terabytes that we're capable of supporting in that system. So if we go over to this side of the board, let's talk about a few examples. So we can see here, these are my two node systems, and these are my four node systems. So I talk to a customer now, and the customer's requirement, uh, I can fit that nice and comfortably with some 630 nodes and some capacity. And as we go through the life cycle of that system, let's say two years down the line, the customer starts to realize that there's more workloads coming. Uh, there's a requirement for more IOPS, potentially a requirement for more terabytes, but we might see those two independently. Now, normally, they would look to potentially deploying another system. In Primera, we can look at the system and say, okay, we've got 630 now. 650 is easily going to be able to handle the workload and capacity requirements that I've got coming up for the next two years. So I can take out my controller nodes and add those and make those now 650s. And here's the important thing. We can do this as an online process with disks and data in place. So let's think about that for a second. I haven't had to physically move any data. I'm retaining the largest part of my investment, which is typically the media. I've managed to go non-disruptively from one set of controllers with a set number of cores and cache and memory in there to the next size up without having to plan for any downtime, any application downtime, and without having to physically move any blocks of data from one set of drives to another set of drives. Well, that's huge, because if you look at the challenges that customers have today, though typically a migration where you're moving data is exceptionally risky, it consumes a lot of time, and it's typically done out of hours, so it's costly. So very quickly in this world, I've managed to take my customer from one set of controller nodes to the next set of controller nodes up, delivering more performance and the capability to support more capacity, and I've done that without having to move any of his data, and I've done it on an online process, so therefore the customer's got the benefit of that next technology. Now let's just say, three years on from now, the customer then has to, you know, starting to run out of performance again. So we now looked at the 670 nodes. So again, same process. I buy the 670 nodes, or I might get them included in the timeless contract. And then again, my capacity and my media stays the same. And so the customer, again, schedules his uh, quiet period of time to do that upgrade, and has gone from the smaller system to the larger system. Could have done that in six months, could have done that across five years. He's retained the investment in the media because that hasn't changed. We haven't had to physically replicate or move any data to get the benefit of the new performance. And the customer is able to take the, the capacity performance increases that he gets from those controller nodes. So let's have a look at that from a four node perspective. So I could start down here with just two 650 nodes because that's what I need from a capacity and performance point of view at this moment in time. Now let's say, uh, I want to increase my levels of availability at the front end, and also I need a big performance boost. I don't need the 670 controllers, but I do need another pair of 650s. So in this example, I can add in two 650 nodes. Now I have a four-node system, delivering the performance and capabilities and capacity capabilities of a four-node system, without having to move any data, without having to do any kind of migration, and without having to buy a significant amount of new infrastructure. But let's say two, three years down the line, okay, I'm starting to run out of performance from my 650 nodes. Now I need to look at moving to the 670 nodes. So again, here's my disk and data. So although I'm showing the arrow of moving, actually what I'm doing is I'm retaining the media and therefore the data that's on the media. And I schedule my window in which to do an online process to replace two of the nodes to 670s and then the other two nodes to 670s. So now I've gone from my mid-sized controller to the largest controller delivering the maximum amount of performance and capacity capability. I've retained my media, which again, remember that's where most of my cost is. I've retained that. I haven't had to move any blocks of data around, so I've eliminated the risk and the cost and the operational overhead of doing a migration. And now my customer has a system capable of delivering the maximum amount of performance and the maximum amount of capacity in that system. So if we think then easily, equally, I could start over here with 630 controller nodes, so these small ones, so not the two-node system, but I could start with the four-node four, the four node chassis. And now, let's say that my customer um, is outgrown his 630 nodes. So my first instance, okay, I'm gonna go, I've got the budget, and actually I'm gonna go 670 all the way because then I'm protected for you know, the next five to six years. So I swap out these two for my 670 controller nodes. 
and let's say six months down the line, remember my disks and data stayed in place, so I haven't had to move anything, I haven't had to have the burden of that. Six months down the line, there's a performance requirement, and now I add in my other 670 controller nodes, and now I've got a system capable of delivering the maximum amount of performance and the maximum amount of capacity at the back end. So lots of variations to increase performance and increase the capability for capacity on the system, both using the small controller nodes, my 630s, and potentially going to 670s or 650s to 670s, for example. So what are we saying here? We've got a system that's highly available, massively flexible. We're providing the capability to increase the level of performance and the number of resources at the front end with my disks and data in place, which is where most of my capex is because the media is the expensive part, without having to move large volumes of data around. And there's one other benefit that comes from this. So if we look at SSD media today, Typically, a spinning drive, most customers would have deployed it, probably written it off over three to four years, maybe five years, and then they look for a tech refresh. So today, with SSD technology, most organizations are looking at a life cycle of around seven to eight years. So if you think now, seven to eight years, your performance requirements are absolutely going to change over that seven to eight years. You can't predict that far ahead because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what new projects are coming. So actually, this capability to swap out controller nodes and increase the level of performance and capability to support capacity at the back end, if I'm deploying th something for seven to eight years, is absolutely critical. And the other big benefit, you think now, if I was really using spinning drives and a technology that didn't support this, I probably would have had two migrations at that point. Migrations that meant moving data from A to B, reconnecting my hosts from A to B, the cost, the risk, and the time associated with that. In this world, for seven to eight years, I've effectively eliminated two complete migration tasks. And that's absolutely huge for an organization. And most importantly, I've done that, and I've still retained my investment in the media, which is the most expensive part of most storage purchases. So I hope that's been useful. Um, thank you for listening. If you want more information, please visit hpe.com forward slash storage.